We begin, however, with something most of us do three times a day. We eat. However bad you think inflation is, and it is awful, it's going to get worse. And pay attention to food prices. Everything from cereal to butter to meat is going to spike significantly. If inflation over the past year was a campfire, the war in Ukraine is adding quite literally rocket fuel, turning it into an inferno burning through your cash. 30% of the world's wheat, 17% of corn, 32% of barley, and 15% of fertilizer comes from Ukraine and Russia. Ukraine obviously isn't exporting anything, and Russia isn't allowed to because of the war. So the prices of those things are going to skyrocket. In fact, they are already started. For example, fertilizer is up 50% from last year. Wheat is up 38%, corn is up too. Think about this. What do farmers buy in abundance? Fertilizer for their fields and corn to feed their cows. So they will be charging more. That's on top of where beef prices already are. Sirloin up nearly 30%, brisket 25%, tenderloin more than 13%. Already, Moody says inflation is costing the average American family $276 extra dollars a month. That's $3,500 a year. And that's going to get even higher. Farmers are at the start of the food supply chain. Whatever costs them more gets passed on to you, exponentially, really, at the grocery store checkout lane. Just think about beef. It started on a farm. Interest rates are up for the farmer. The cow must eat. Corn prices are up. The farmer pays for oil for his machinery. Those prices are up. The cow gets trucked to the slaughterhouse. Gas prices are up. So are trucker salaries. The meat gets sold to a wholesaler, then to a grocery store. Their costs and their transportation costs and their labor costs are up. And finally, to you, struggling with higher prices on just about everything. We start at the beginning of the supply chain. Trey Wassenberger is a cattle rancher with 4,000 acres of land, nearly 1,000 head of cattle, also co-founder of Sustainable Beef, joins us from Nebraska. Good to see you, sir. We appreciate it. Uh, boy, are we even at the beginning of the end of the price hikes? No, uh, thanks for having me on, Leland. You know, we, we said that two years ago, when does it end? When does this inflation uh, stop? And, you know, just, you know, with pandemics and now a, a large war, I just think this is only the beginning. And unfortunately, it's only just going to be passed on to the consumers. It's pretty easy when we all pay for such higher prices at the supermarket to think, boy, the guys with big hats who own all the cows are getting rich. Is that the way it works? You know, you, you said it earlier, beef's up about 20 to 30 percent in the last uh, couple years. Actually, our family, uh, the cattle, cattle and beef are different. Cattle's probably uh, not changed at all. And, and with inflation and inputs, we are probably getting more, we are taking more dollars home as producers now than we ever have before and probably in the last decade. Wow. I think about the major meat packers, Tyson, their stock's up 14 percent, JBS up 54 percent, Cargill not public. Uh, ADR, National Beef Packing, up 40%. Credit where credit is due. President Biden talked about this at the be very beginning of January. Here's what he said. Take a listen. Small businesses and family farmers and ranchers, I need not tell some of my Republican friends from those states. Guess what? You got four basic meat packing facilities. That's it. You play with them, but you don't get to play at all. And you pay a hell of a lot more. All right. The president talked about it at the State of the Union. He talked about it about January 3rd. Is anything the government doing helping? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, this is really the first time the administration has come to terms that we have a huge, uh, giant problem. And that's where billions of dollars are leaving rural communities and going uh, going elsewhere. And, and this is, they, they have, the, we've been in touch with USDA Secretary uh, Tom Vilsack and even our local uh, USDA here and our governor, uh, Mr. Pete Ricketts, and also our state senators locally. And, and we're all trying to pull the wagon in the same direction and make some change and pass on a little savings to the to the U.S. consumer. How much are we talking about in savings and what are you guys doing? Um, you know, the, the USDA came out and said there's going to be some kind of some uh, granting and some infrastructure for to promote some more uh, beef plant uh, processing and also our state legislature has also passed on some ARPA money uh, to individuals to, to kind of uh, make some economic development back into our communities and hopefully kind of change the gap between beef and cattle and return, uh, you know, the hard-earned money back to the producer. Hmm. 
All right, wh where does this go from here? Are there going to be a lot of farmers going out of business? Or are there going to be just an end of demand for beef because it's going to get so expensive? Give us a, a view forward. Yeah, you know, Leland, that's like asking me to forecast the weather, but I will tell you that you, you can't punish your uh, your customer long enough. Eventually, they're going to give up, and they're going to go somewhere else and find a cheaper or, uh, you know, that, that single mother in Tampa Bay or, or in uh, San Francisco, she's going to find that chicken or pork and go to that kind of protein, and that's what we're up against right now. And it's not the producer's fault. It's not the producer's fault. Uh, we're doing everything can, everything we can to get the most wholesome, nutritious uh, protein on the planet to their plate as cheap as we can. It's just, it's out of our hands right now. And that's what uh, our company and, and our community is trying to do is sustainable beef here in North Platte, Nebraska. Yeah, no, I know you guys are now trying to pack some packs of them, your own beef to take on the, the big meat companies. You've been at this for generations. You're a young man. As you talk to the older, the older farmers who talked to the older farmers before that in, in Nebraska, have they ever seen a situation like this, what's happening? No, and that's what's the problem in agriculture is my dad did it, my grandpa did it, and his grandpas did it, and they can always kind of give us some history, history and kind of shepherd us in how to handle this, but no one's ever seen a pandemic, and, they're, and, and so there's really no playbook. And once again, there's never really been a greenfield startup packing facility either. There is no uh, agenda, and we've had to go and, and try as hard as we can as a company to get this done because it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Um, no doubt about it. Well, if farming was easy, everybody would do it too. It's yeah. it's not a, it's not an easy life, but we're awfully grateful. And thanks for taking the time to talk to us. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. Godspeed. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.